The Conditions of Learning by Robert Gagne You've probably never thought about how someone learns to throw a ball, or how a child learns to write. They are very different skills, but the steps in learning them are quite similar, and have been theorized by Robert Gagne's Conditions of Learning. So who was Robert Gagne? Well, he was born in 1916 in Massachusetts. He trained as an education psychologist and worked in aviation during World War II. After the war, he returned to education and went on to write his seminal work, The Conditions of Learning, in 1965. Gagne states that there are many types of learning, which require different instruction. He identifies five major categories of learning. The first of these is verbal information, which is simply memorizing facts and being able to recite them later on. Intellectual skills are not only knowing what, but how to do something, like solving a puzzle. Cognitive strategies allow us to manage and plan our learning process, telling us how to go about performing a task. Motor skills are based around precise muscular movements to engage in an activity, such as swinging a golf club. Finally, attitudes are the outcomes of learning that influence choices of personal action, such as influencing a willingness to exercise. Gagne also goes on to outline nine events of instruction, which he states are events external to the learner that support the internal processes of learning. The first of these is to gain attention. This is a stimulus of some sort to begin instruction, such as a story or connecting with the learner's own experiences. Informing the learner of the objective is telling the learner what they'll be able to do at the end of the instruction. An example of this is telling a class that they will be able to write narrative texts. The next step is to stimulate recall of prior knowledge. This is connecting what the learner is about to learn to what they already know. Presenting the materials is the next step. This involves presenting content across a range of different modes so as to best engage the learner. The next step is to provide guidance to the learner. This is to ensure the learner is comfortable during the various learning activities at all times and to assist them if they are confused. Step 6 is to elicit performance. This is where the learner can practice and apply their skills. This gives the learner a chance to develop on their own under the guidance of their instructor. The next step is to give feedback. This feedback should be specific instead of general by providing specific praise and criticisms so the learner is fully aware of where to go next. Step 8 is to assess performance. This is where the learner can be evaluated and their success determined. It also identifies areas where the learner can improve. Finally, step 9 is enhanced retention and transfer. This allows the review of the lesson and gives the learner a chance to apply their skills in the field and to see if they have retained them. So what are the benefits of Gagne's conditions of learning? Well, it provides a stepped approach for the learning process. It allows the learner to be fully engaged when all the steps are followed. And it allows the educator to stop and reflect on their own practice, ensuring that they have followed each of the steps involved in the learning process.